Hello everybody, hope you're doing okay. Now, Ilyip Kipchoge here. When he broke two hours in the 159 Ineos Challenge in 2019, he did a very slight negative split. So that means he ran his second half of his marathon slightly faster than his first one. And indeed, when the tragic Kelvin Kipton broke the world record in the Chicago Marathon in 2023, he actually ran a massive one minute and one second negative split. So is that a negative split the best way to go for all types of runners from the elites here in the 2021 British Olympic Trials? all the way down to everyday runners running around about four hours or just under and the sub elite runners also doing under three hours as well so i thought i'd analyze the halfway splits in the 2023 london and boston marathons given they're coming up again this year to see what sort of trends we could see okay so uh, time for a spreadsheet once again so let's throw out some headline figures here in, in the london marathon 2023 we had just over 48,000 runners and only seven percent of them did negative splits with a mean differential between in the first and the second half of 12 minutes 37 so that's everyone's halfway split put into a like order and then the person in the middle was 12 minutes and 37 seconds slower in the second half than the first half so is this negative split difference actually impacted by how fast the runners are well yes it is because if you look here in london marathon in 2023 and also boston 2023 i looked at the sub three runners and there were just over 3,000 in London, just over 4,000 in Boston, and very similar stats. 21% of those runners in London did, did a negative split, and 18% in Boston. Now, the more interesting figure is that the mean differential between the first half and the second half was basically two minutes in both races. You can't really see any difference between the two. So one minute 48 in London, that means the runners were on average one minute 48 seconds slower in the second half and in Boston two minutes 14. Now having run London that's probably quite explainable by the fact that the second half of London is slightly harder anyway and I think Boston with all the hills definitely gets harder as well. But it's very interesting that two races there which are quite different both had very similar stats. If we then think is this impacted by gender well not really so I've taken the split here between men and women in London Marathon 2023 and you can see here that there's very little difference between the men and the women. Obviously, there's far more men doing a sub three than the women. So these women, you could argue, are actually sub elites. But interestingly, no real difference in the negative splits and the mean differentials either. You know, if you look at a wider picture in London 2023, we can see here how these mean differentials basically go up as you get slower. So the four hour to 4.30 range, which is basically the sort of in the middle of the people finishing anyway, is also pretty much the same median differential between that and all runners. But if you notice here, when you go up to six hour runners, the median differential in the second half goes up to a whopping 33 minutes 29 and only 2% of runners running over six hours actually do a negative split. And it's only 5% when you're at the four hour range so it definitely does seem to be that the faster running you are the more likelihood that you're going to do a negative split but more interestingly i think the fact that your first half and second half are going to be much closer together now if we dive a bit deeper into analysis of this the times running around about three hours so what i've done is i've banded london and boston into five minute bands so you've got 250 to 255 so they're people breaking three hours comfortably you've got 255 to three hours they're the people that are just doing it and then you've got the three hours to 305 they're the people just missing it now what's interesting here i think is that the median differentials when you get over three hours actually rise up quite a lot so three minutes 34 there in london three minutes 14 boston almost identical and the percentages are very similar as well 13 percent in london 11 in boston so it kind of shows to me that if you're striving for that three hour barrier maybe you just sort of try a bit harder and you can see here that of the people that failed to break three hours, 64% of them were under uh, halfway in London and 69% in Boston. So quite, again, very similar figures. But if you look here at the people that broke three hours, then 96% of them in London were already under three at halfway. And the differential there was only one minute 36. Also interesting, I looked at the people of those who actually did PBs. And it's also interesting that there's very little difference between the, the overall median and the median just for the runners doing PBs. So you would kind of think that if you do a PB, you'd run a better race. But it doesn't actually seem to be the case. It just seems to be that if you want to run a sub three hour marathon, then your best bet is to be around about 
two minutes sort of slower in the second half. Obviously, you can be faster than that, but when you start getting slower than two minutes, then you're starting on the other end of the bell curve. And interestingly, the people at two hours to 2.55 had a slightly higher median differential, although in Boston, it was pretty much the same. And it was interesting in Boston there that every single runner who broke 2.55 was under 1.30 at halfway. I think it was on sub-3 pace at halfway. And if you look at the percentage of the people who basically didn't break 1.30 at halfway, they're 96% in London and Boston. So it kind of shows that you can do a negative split. And But interestingly, that a negative split to up to two minutes differential seems to be the best way of going. Now, I've done some graphs here. This is in 30-minute bands, just to illustrate more what I've said in the opening slide. So the green line here is the median differential between the first and the second half. So the positive is means you run slower in the second half. So it's just showing here that the sub-230 runners, the median differential for them is 1 minute 37. Pretty similar when you're in the 2.30 to 3-hour range, 1.48, and then it climbs up and up and up. And the people in the 3 to 3.30 range, 3.57, and then it just keeps going up and up, 3.30 to 4.30, 6 minutes 19, 12 minutes 30 in the four, just over the four hours, and then 18.23, 4.30 to 5 hours, 26 minutes, 5 hours something, and then 33 minutes, 29 for 6 hours plus. And this is the percentage of people that are doing it. It's interesting, the most number of people doing the negative split is actually in the 2.30 to 3 hour range. I think that could be partly because when you're like an elite or sub elite athlete i think it's far more likely that you're going to be going out to sort of like go for a time and you don't have so many runners around you so i think that's probably explains by the fact that when you've got the bigger packs in the sort of the 230 to three hour range and they're the sort of the experienced club runners that's why there's a slightly more higher percentage of negative splits there but you can see these percentages go down and down and down as the median differential goes up and up and up. I've also done a graph of the sub three in sub 220 range here, 220 to 230, 230 to 240, 240 to 250, and then five minute bounds just around the per hour line. So what we're seeing here is that the slightly darker line here in each case is showing the case when the people did their PBs and the slightly lighter one, i.e. the grey, not the black, and the, the light green, not the dark green, is when there was anybody. I just want to illustrate the fact there's very little difference between the people doing the PBs and everybody. The top lines here are the percentage of negative splits and the green lines here are the median differentials. Again, as I was saying earlier, when you just fail to break three hours, then those median differentials start to go up. Otherwise, I think it's fairly static. So I've also done a similar graph here for comparing London and Boston, just to show that the trends between the percentage of negative splits and the median differentials are very same in this sort of sub three range and just over. Just want to illustrate the fact that you know, it doesn't seem to be that the actual course uh, has much of a bearing on things so i hope you found this interesting and if you've got a marathon coming up and then hopefully it's particularly pertinent have you decided what is your halfway split strategy my pb of 233.53 came off a 115.30 halfway split so i was just on the outer edge i say of those sort of median differentials there i don't know whether people have got slightly better because when i did that differential i was going past people like they were standing still so a lot of people must have had very slow differentials but more recently when i've done my most recent at sub three and in 256 in Seville I've done slightly negative splits I don't know whether that's because the fact that I was so frightened of like blowing up I went a bit easier in the first half or whether I just got more experience with older age it just goes to show that when I ran my fastest time I had a big positive split and when I ran slower do still did a sub three had a slightly negative split so it just goes to show at the end of the day the most important thing is your finishing time so yeah what is your strategy in this one and what do you think do you agree with these stats do they echo what you see in the races so as i said hope you found it interesting like and subscribe to that and see you in the next one then bye